Good morning, friends. It's Monday morning, milking time. Come on in, Clover Dover. Today is a busy day. Marius is slaughtering our sow today, and then she's getting brought to the butcher as a farm kill. Inspected kill in an abattoir, the meat can then be sold. Um, farm kill, you can't sell the meat. We're not selling the meat. We're just doing it for ourselves. That sow is really mean. Come on out, goaty goat. And we don't trust her to load her in a trailer and bring her to the abattoir. So, she's massive. Um, yes. She's over there. Anyhow, um, yeah, I'm going to be making cheese this morning. We have chicks that just started hatching. Okay, go get green. I'm going to try making manchego cheese this morning. I have never made manchego before. I'm interested to see how it goes. I've been saving up some milk and then we'll use this morning's fresh milk from Clover Dover as well. We have chicks hatching in the incubator. Frey, go get grain for the cows. And chicks hatching in uh, um, the chicken. Maybe there's chicks hatching in the chicken. Frey, just go get the grain for the goat, please. Um... So one of my projects for today is to move the chicks that are like three to four weeks old outside under a heat lamp in one of our sheds and then get the space in our basement ready for the new chicks that will come out of the incubator tomorrow. So that's one of my projects for today. And fridge needs a real good clean out too. So Freya, when you start getting not much milk, what's your next step? What do you do? Bunt. You bunt her at her a bit. And then you keep milking. Well, now you're stripping. Yeah. How do you know when you're done milking? Because it stops coming out, but then you drip comes out. So Marius has two brothers. He's one of five kids. He's the oldest. Him, then two girls, then two boys. So one of his brothers um, pretty much always comes when Marius is going to be slaughtering something. First of all, he just wants to learn and get better at doing it all. And second of all, we always give him meat as a thank you and as payment. And they don't buy meat like us, but they don't raise meat. So... It saves them a lot of money to always help butcher, whether we're like butchering a deer or we're butchering a cow, like or we're slaughtering a pig, whatever we're doing. They come and help 
and we always send them with meat and they're a small family, they only have two little kids. So it makes a huge dent in the meat that they need to buy. Hurry up, the dishwasher is broken. Therefore, you need to help with the dish rack. but not quite stiff peaks. Would you make a reel about this? Snack plate lunch, we had gluten-free rice crackers, maple syrup candied salmon, sweet potato gluten-free crackers, bear pepperoni our butcher makes, and then an Asiago I made, and a spiced gouda I made. Yeah, they all do similar things. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's... Um, I'm gonna let it keep going a bit longer. When the butter's a lot like this more together, it's easier to wash then. Sometimes I'll let it go even farther, but I'm gonna leave it here. Your mom made Look who I found! So cute! Is she having any more? Nope. Oh, are you are you gonna edit over this? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll get flipped in an hour. Look, and then it'll sit in the press either till tonight, depending on what time I'm up till. It needs at least eight hours. So the um, is that like a full like cylinder thing, and and the rest of the water is leaking out? Yeah. It's just this is a plumbing outflow pipe, is what it is. Oh, cool. It's like the perfect size for what you want. Yeah. This only works with big batches of cheese, otherwise you'd have a really flat wheel. Oh, I have smaller what? ones for smaller batches. Yeah, I have to sort out, we have to move the big ones outside, we have to get their space set up. Just put... Hmm? In the small one, the now one? Are they going in close Yes. But we have to set the heat lamp up in there first. The big ones. The big ones are going to go out there. Do you want me to take the camera so you can see? No, it's in there. I'm actually going to dump this in here. So.
me to hold it up there, Kate? Okay. If you can get close to it. Look, I'll get from you. And 49. Okay, 53 by 49. Turn off now. Check out where? Uh, we have a, like a pile where we put all the stuff mm -hmm. far away from the house and far away from other people's houses. Okay, wow. So good for them though. All this fat and such and the blood. So good. Chicken. Oh yeah. yeah. This breed of rooster Oh, sorry. And that hen are Bielfelders, yeah. which is a, a breed I wanted to get. We got last year as chicks, or we got as eggs. Eggs? Yeah, the that's, that's the point. They meet birds? Pardon me? He spilled it. Oh, how bad? Uh, not too bad. So some people just showed up to buy seed potatoes. Um, and I didn't really know when they were coming. I just knew they were coming today at some point. And there's like a giant garbage pile from dealing with stuff with the excavator. And there's a, a gut pile because Marius has just gone to take this out to the butcher. I can't remember if I told you guys. We just opted to have a butcher do it this time because we just are short on time this time of year and the butcher can do it to our specifications and make sausages with no fillers and weird things so we decided to do that this time anyway so he left to do that right away when he gets back he'll get rid of the guts there's like a gut pile and there's like all these things going on it's chaos friends so the thing about laundry lines that are big and long like this is you have to be careful of where your weight distribution is. So that's why I sort into piles because I start with lighter weight stuff and then I get to heavier stuff and then I put one of these things as a support and then I put heavier stuff and then lighter stuff and then heavier stuff. So the heavier stuff is by these for better support. Although the weather is starting to look questionable, as you can see. There's only a small chance of rain and it's supposed to be windy too. So I'm gonna hang the laundry, even if it gets rained on a little bit. Rain is actually an excellent laundry softener. That does happen occasionally though, where you accidentally drop something over the side. Another thing where you can get into trouble with a laundry line is hanging really big things like blankets or sheets and hanging them at the other end and then they get wrapped around and then you have to get lifted up in the tractor bucket in order to get them down because this laundry line is very high. So if you're doing big things like sheets and blankets, they need to be at this end so you don't get into that. These days it's getting hard to tell jeans, like these are Max jeans and these are my jeans. I have to do a double check and I've ended up with his jeans in my laundry a couple times. And then the very best part of hanging up laundry. Lunch, lunch. 
so I was literally like just about to go lay down or lay down on the couch or bed or whatever, read a book after our super busy morning. It's like one o'clock, two o'clock right now. And then this rascal woke up from his nap. And he did a lot of beer pills. Yeah, and it, he needs a change. He's wet. He's soggy. So much for a rest. They probably do, but you have I have to. never seen one in my whole life, and if anybody on this planet would have one, my dad would. Where's that one that was ever that Amos was wearing? We had a West Bay yeah, Fraser Everett concrete Amber. hat. Yeah, Everett. something in zero. No, no, no. Uh, uh, not shooting accurately. Somebody knocked something. What does it say? 300 pounds? Uh, 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 3.4, I was right. And you were all wrong. I said 3.4. to see in there but <laughs> oh you get away from the toilet you get away from the toilet it's full of chicks tonight is just 36 hours not quite so we're not we're gonna pull them out in the morning it's best if you don't open it up give the other ones a chance to hatch because opening them up um, the humidity then drastically leaves and then you can end up like if there's ones that are like cracked open but not out they'll like shrink wrap around the chicks so let's we'll leave them for now so many in there though Carefully. 
magic. Okay, the, the beaks. Should we tell the boys we did this too? So, fingers crossed those ones that we're working on hatching are okay. Yeah, so I still want um, It was just really full in there. That, that's why we took them out. But, 38, they look good. One doesn't look good. It maybe has intestines coming out of its bum, which happens occasionally. We had one like that last time. Yeah. So we'll see. It should move in its beak, but it was almost hatched. I thought it's making its beak round. So when you doesn't it just kill it might put the heat lamp down. Plus, more. there's those two from the hen outside. Mm, they're just who had her chicks. So yesterday the sow got butchered. This is the pig's house. I came down to milk, and I noticed the piglets we're not anywhere to be seen so I quietly came down here and they're in there I'll show you in a second so I quietly came with a pallet and blocked them and then called Marius to bring his screw gun to attach this because then some of them can go to their new homes today and when we castrated them last time two of them sucked one of their balls up and we kind of had run out of time fighting off the sow castrating piglets so we decided that at weaning we just had to do it again which sucks but some people like everybody has a different opinion on when you castrate piglets some people say as soon as possible some people um do it at weaning so here's the piggly wigglies They have a whole huge pen and everything and it <coughs> goes around that side too, but it's just their house and it keeps them nice and warm, nice log house. So I think the fresh grass finally hit them because not only is she just pouring milk out, she's also got a bit of the runs. She's literally just pouring milk. She's also super agitated. I'm not really looking forward to milking. And she pooed. And she pooed. Yeah, she's like, what is going on with you, cow? Heck. Clover is continuing to be super freaking cranky. At this point, I'm just trying to get her milked out. Of course, I'm wearing a dress. I like came out here, just threw a jacket on over a dress to milk. This dress definitely needs to be washed now. What? What is up with you, cow? Come on, Clover, up you get. Up you get. Um, mm -hmm. Phil wants us to give her a magnet, too. I have one in my pocket, but there is one. You got the bullet gun for it? No, that didn't work for it. That was too hard. Pipe. Yeah, pipe. Let's just, just get yes, this I done know. so we can get on with our day. <laughs> I feel poking around trying a couple places. <coughs> no one seems to get it first try. Mm. This is it. Mm. Can you see? Like, this is where okay, I'm. Okay, you all switch you places then because it's, it's older. 
Hold it. No, you gotta hold it. Yeah, okay, well I have to pass off the needle so that I have a hand. You really want to video this? <laughs> this is seriously what they call for. Yeah, 14 by 2. Okay. I wonder if holding it, that collar is causing her vein to not. Well, no, because it's the vein will then bulge on Okay, I don't know how to do the rest of this part, yeah. so. This is the vein. Yeah. So, grass tetany is a magnesium deficiency because of our unseasonably cool spring. The grass is very unbalanced and low in magnesium. So, then the cow becomes low in magnesium. So, then the first sign is actually that they're really aggressive and irritable and hard to handle. And then they start to go down, and that was happening with Clover. And I'm so thankful we were able to catch it so fast. She's got like no fucking vein in it. I, I know where it is, but it's not pumping blood. That's why you're not getting anything. Why isn't it pumping blood? If you stick your finger there, it was. If you stick your finger there, it comes up. Well, we're cutting her circulation off somewhere, I think. Last time we did it with Rainer, we didn't have her off to the side, did we? Yeah. We had her okay, just like this. Move back, and I'm going to be right here. So take that metal thing and just plug it into it. Take that. Yeah. And then unclip the white thing. Yeah, I know that. Okay, and don't hold it too high. We want it to come slow. So hold it a bit lower so it comes. So I texted Nathan this morning. So he, and I was like, I said grass tetany, and he's like, quick Google tells me you caught it way sooner than anybody else would. And I was like, well, when my calm cow is suddenly a raging meanie, agitated, irritated, kicking at me, I'm going to figure out right away what's wrong with her. Mm -hmm. And then I texted Naomi what was going on. And she was like, I've never had it, but it sounds just like grass tetany. And then I texted the vet. And Yannick said that they get it every now and again. And Phil didn't believe him that it was a thing. He thought it was just extended milk fever. Mm. Apparently. That didn't believe him that they're not. Well, no, the grass tetany was a thing. But yeah. apparently it's to do with the cool spring. Mm -hmm. And then well, we Nathan's, it's also, grass, it? it's actually Angus and Angus cross are susceptible to it. Mm. It's not just a milk cow thing. So every farmer in the valley is saying it's me A lot of them don't have their cows out yet, but because they don't have the grass. Well, cows are out in fields right now yeah. where they've been hanging and kept all winter, and there yeah. is grass in every field in that cow. <clears throat> like here. They're more susceptible if they are fresher, but she's not that fresh. Like they're more susceptible like six to eight weeks for these cows. Mm -hmm. about loosening my hand to rearrange oh, yeah. my fingers. Using that kind of thing. Can you hold oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, man, I'm yeah. <laughs> so I can see this whole the bed back a minute. <laughs> Well, I gave it to her. What? <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh every time I think of this. That's what it is. I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, I know that. The vet also wants to give us to give her 
a magnet. So that's our next step. And oh, cow, you're bleeding a bit. I know you probably have not want me touching that. Now. So here he's getting a piece of water line. And we're gonna try to do the magnet now. <clears throat> you holding her up or? <laughs> what else can we? Uh... Well, I do think I didn't throw it far enough back. Okay. The lines that work really well. <laughs> Yeah, she's 